Hi guys, I'm Pete from Don't Tell The Wife and in this video I'm looking at the Toki Maruri Mark 18 Mod 1 Gas Blowback. Before I go any further, just a quick thank you to my teammate Darling for letting me use his gun for this video. I've been trying for ages to get hold of one and eventually I just gave up and asked to borrow his. The gun itself is completely made out of metal. Of course, the pistol grip and the buttstock itself, they are polymer parts as you'd expect on most rifles but everything else is a metal construction and it's gonna make it weigh just over three kilos. So it's not the lightest gun out there, but at the same time, it's also very balanced in your hand. It feels nice, it's very ergonomic, and they've done a lovely job on Cerakoting the upper and lower receivers. And as for that front rail, well, I'm just gonna get into that later. On the body of the gun itself, it is a standard M4, so all the M4 controls are just where you expect them your mag catch, your fire selector, your trigger and trigger guard are all in the usual place. Just a side note, just like most gas blowback M4s, you cannot actually put that safety selector on unless it's cocked back. When it's not cocked, it's either semi or full auto, you cannot actually engage it onto safe and that's just something to do with the trigger block inside. The safe semi and auto options on your selector are engraved into the body of the gun and it does look really nice. A nice little touch they've done is on the opposite side where you've just got this little arrow that does actually move in line with your selector as well. So it doesn't matter which side of the gun you're looking at, you can actually tell if you're on safe or fire. On the body of the gun along with those markings you've also got your Colt defense markings and of course the ASGK markings that you find on all the Tokyo Marori guns. However if you live in the UK Due to copyright reasons, you are going to struggle to actually get the Colt licensings on a Tokyo Maruri gun. Most retailers in the UK will actually state that the markings will be etched out or covered over just to cover themselves for copyright reasons. Along the top of the gun, you have got some metal flip-up iron sights. Now, the rear iron sight does actually have adjustments for windage and your front iron sight also has elevation as well. In between that, you have got that full-length rail system and you can mount whatever optics you want on top of this thing. It'll be plenty of room for you. At the front of the gun, you have got a full 10 inch barrel. Now that's gonna be completely hidden away because of the fully licensed Daniel Defense handguard. Now this quad rail not only looks fantastic, but it's also gonna give you all the space that you're ever gonna need for any accessories you want to put on this gun. Like I said earlier, it does have this 10 inch barrel. Now, at the end of it, you have got this surefire style flash hider. If you don't like that, or you want to mount a tracy in it or something, there is a 14 millimeter counterclockwise thread underneath that. Of course, with all the rail space and the 14 mil, if you want to, you can completely customize this gun and put whatever you want on this. The gun comes with this 35 round aluminum die cast magazine. Now the die cast metal used is designed not only to resist the gas cooling, but also comes very close to the weight of an actual real steel magazine, fully loaded with all the bullets. The Mark 18 itself does strip just like most gas rifles do. Take the rear body pin out and the top receiver just hinges over. Inside you can see TM's Z system. Now this is designed not only to enhance the durability of the parts, but also make sure that all these moving parts work well, prevent the gun from shaking itself apart, and just make sure that the gun lasts as long as it physically can. As you expect, the gun does come with a hop unit and that hop unit is hidden right behind the bolt. Now it is a pig to get to. You have got to pull that bolt all the way back just to access it and this is very stiff. So it is going to break a fingernail if you're doing it by hand, but once that's set, I don't think that's going to move at all. For the Chrono, I am using 0.2 gram BBs and even with the low powered gas, I'm still getting about the 300 mark. So I can kind of understand why some people want to put green or even red gas into these, but at the same time, you do run the risk of burning these internals out. That being said, even with this low powered gas, I'm still getting quite a bit of kick into my shoulder. And you can really feel it each time you pull this trigger. It's not quiet at all. It is a really loud thunking noise. And inside where I am, it just echoes off the wall and makes it even better. So going into this video, I was very dubious about using this gun. Personally, I'm not a huge TM fan. I've had their products before and even with the hype, I just didn't feel like they were performing like they should. 
That being said, after using this gun, it is definitely one of the best gas guns I've ever used. It's definitely a nice gun. It's got a beautiful kick to it. It's nice and weighty, and it just doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart at all. It is definitely up to the normal TM standards for build quality. Internally, no problems at all. It is solid in there. This thing is just gonna run and run and run. If you've got a question, don't forget to leave it in the comments below. And until next time, thanks for watching.